we're going to have a bit of a look at polynomials and, and complex numbers. Now, I mentioned this before, but it is quite an important thing. If you're looking at a polynomial and all the coefficients are real, then you know the solutions or the roots will always appear in conjugate pairs. Always been conjugate pairs. Yeah? So therefore, every polynomial of degree n can be factorized down to be a mixture of quadratics and linear factors. Okay, so if there's a cubic, it should be possible for that cubic to be broken down further. The quadratic, maybe, maybe not, depending on what the quadratic is. That's if we're dealing with real numbers. Because now that we're dealing with complex numbers, all of those quadratics can now be factorized as well. So a polynomial of degree n should end up with n linear factors. What it also means, if they're appearing in conjugate pairs, if the polynomial is of odd degree, we know it must have at least one real solution. Because the complex solutions, there'll be an even number of solutions. So if you've got the same number of factors as you do the power, and you've got an odd power, there must be a real one in there somewhere. Okay, so let's start off with a simple one there. x squared plus 2x plus 2. Um, I guess the first thing we do is we say, oh, what multiplies together to give 2, adds together to give 2, and oh, hang on, no, it's not possible. So you might go to the quadratic formula or you might complete the square. I'm going by completing the square. So I know I could rewrite that as x plus 1 all squared plus 1. But now I can turn that into the difference of two squares because, of course, plus 1 is the same as saying minus i squared. So therefore, this factorizes to be x plus 1 plus i, x plus 1 minus i. So that's factorized over all the complex numbers. This time I've got a quartic. Mind you, it is a quartic that can be treated like a quadratic because we notice the powers are going down by an even amount. So first of all, we'll try the easiest way. Multiplies together to give negative 12, adds together to give one. Actually, that's possible, I think, isn't it? Four and three should work. And the four would be positive and the three would be negative. But then the, the real numbers I could factorize to be z plus root three, z minus root three. So that's if we're just dealing with real numbers. Complex numbers, then the z squared plus 4 can also factorize. It'll be z plus 2i, z minus 2i. Mind you, in this case, it's an equation, so we'll write down all our solutions. z could be plus or minus root 3, or plus or minus 2i. Okay, our factor theorem reminder, we know that if x minus a is a factor, then polynomial a will equal 0. So that allows us to find factors. If it's ax minus b, then we would substitute in b over a. So b divided by whatever the coefficient of x is. So let's factorise this one. It's a cubic. So I know there must exist a real one in there somewhere. I can use my factor theorem to try and draw it out and just place random numbers in. Mind you, let's do it logically. If the constant's 5, then the first thing I'm going to be trying is factors of 5. Does one work? Does five work? Of course, there could be negative numbers. Negative one, negative five. But in this case, we've got two x cubed. So maybe it's a half or negative half or five on two or negative five on two. There could be possibilities as well. So the logical first one to try would always be, that's right, minus a half. Oh, look, it works. That was lucky, hey. <laughs> No, you're right. Of course, I probably would try one, first of all, because it's an easy number to substitute in. Um, but turns out minus a half works. There's our, our real factor. So I know 2x plus 1 is a factor. I can do a, a polynomial division or just by inspection, however you get that second factor. It's now quadratic. Multiply together to give 5, adds together to give negative 2. That's not going to work, is it? So I'll complete the square on that one. x minus 1 squared plus 4, but the plus 4 I can think of as minus 4i squared. And so we'll get x minus 1 minus 2i, x minus 1 plus 2i. Ooh, this time we've got a quartic. They've told us there are two rational zeros. Well, rational zeros also have to be real. Because when we talk about rational numbers and irrational numbers, remember they were in the real set of numbers. 
So find those zeros and then factorize over the complex field. So all right, again, let's look at the constant. That's a prime number, that makes life a bit easier. So I could try one, I could try three or negatives, but we've got four out the front, a half or three on two, but also a quarter or three quarters. So yes, of course, half would be the, the one we try first again, and it, it works. So polynomial a half works. So I know 2x minus one is a factor. Um, let's work out the other factor. All right. I personally prefer to do them just by inspection myself, like this. So I say, use a little bit of logic, and I know, well, the leading terms times the leading term must have given me the leading term. So therefore, it must have started with 2x cubed. The constant times the constant must have given me the constant. So I know I've got plus 3. So I need to work out how many x squareds and how many x's are in there. Well, if I was to leave it like this, I would end up with uh, 6x. But we want 1x. So to get from 6 to 1, I'd have to subtract 5. So the negative 1 must have been times 5x. Okay, there's our x's. Um, will I go with the x cubes or the x squareds next? Which one's going to be easier? Probably the x cubes will be easier. At this stage, all I've got is minus 2x cubed. I want 8x cubed. So to get from minus 2x cubed to 8x cubed, I'd need to add 10. So the 2x would have to be multiplied by 5x squared to get another 10x cubed. All right, so there's my cubic there. All right, we know that cubic has to have a rational solution because overall there was two, we've only found one. Uh, so again, I, three is a prime number. What one will I try? Oh, minus three on two. Oh, yes, that worked. That was good. Gee, I'm getting lucky today. Um, so I now know 2x plus 3 is another factor. So the rational zeros, I found those. That was the first bit they said. We got a half and minus 3 on 2. But we still have to factorise the whole thing. So there's the original polynomial. We found two of the factors. Again, let's do it by inspection. The leading terms were well, 2x times 2x times x squared would give me 4x to the 4. Minus 1 times 3 times plus 1 will give me the minus 3. So the question now is, how many x's? Ah, at this stage, how many x's do we have? I could go 2x times 3 times 1. That's it's not a trick question. 2x times 3 times 1. Very good. And I could go minus 1 times 2x times 1, which is? Minus 2. So all up we now have? Four. And we want? X. So how do I go from 4x to x? So we want to end up with minus 3. So it must have been minus 1 times 3. Now what? It's minus 1 times 3? Minus 3. Times? And uh, there's my working over the side there. <laughs> the, oh, yes, it is X. There you go. All right. Now, did they say factorise it completely over all the complex or just over the reals? What did the question say? Okay, so we keep going. X squared plus X plus 1. Multiplies together to give 1, adds together to give 1. Well, obviously that's not going to work. So let's complete the square on that one. X plus a half squared plus three quarters. So we'll get x plus a half plus root three on two i, x plus a half minus root three on two i. Notice I've got to leave those as fractions because this is not an equation, this is simply factorise this polynomial. So I have to end up with, for instance, four x to the power of four. So two x times two x, I'm already at four for the uh, coefficient. So therefore the coefficients of the other ones have to stay at one. Um, if I wanted to, I, I suppose I could factorize out a half and put that out the front if you wanted to, but I think it's easier just to leave those fractions in there. If it's an equation, it's fine because 
you can multiply both sides by, uh, well in this case four would work, and then it'll get everything nice and neat with no fractions in there. Okay, this time they've told me it has a real root of multiplicity two. Now, what do we know about polynomials and, and multiple roots? Yeah, we could use that idea. The derivative must have the same root. <coughs> That's one idea. Um, I'm looking at it and saying, well, I know the divisors here. Thankfully, it's monic. That helps. But it must go into 45. There's quite a few numbers that go into 45. So I, I could try 1, 3, 5, 9, 15, 45. Um, there's the derivative. That might make life a little bit easier. I tried one. Oh, didn't work. Because as I say, logically, one is the first one. So just, just to prove I don't always cheat. And go, there's the answer straight away. Oh, the derivative one does not equal zero. So that's not our multiple root. Uh, three. There's the next number along. And that one did work. However, I don't know it's the multiple root, because all I know at this stage is it's a solution to the derivative. It's got to be a solution to the original polynomial as well. And if we sub that in, oh yes, that's zero as well. So we now know our double root. So x minus 3 squared is indeed a factor. Okay, so it's going to be x minus 3 squared times something. Leading term times leading term. Leading term here is z squared. So z squared times z squared will give me z to the power of 4. Constant times the constant. Well, the constant in this case is minus 3 squared, which is 9. 9 times 5 is 45. How many z? If I was to leave it like that, how many z would I have at this stage? Well, when we square it, that's twice the product, isn't it? So I've got minus 6... Hang on, minus 6 times 5. Oh, excellent. We don't have to do anything else because we've got the minus 30z that we want. So there mustn't be a, uh, a z term in that second factor. So I'll just factorise it over the reals and we'll get z minus 5i, z plus 5i. And so there's my solution. I suppose because it's an equation and all they said was solve. I didn't actually need to do this second last line. Because I, mean, I could have got those answers from the, the third last line here. That would have been fine. <coughs> okay. So 1G, plus a couple of questions out of Patel as well.